Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Holmes, and today we're going to be discussing how your gut bacteria can actually change your sex hormones. So specifically, we're going to be talking about something called lipopolysaccharides. Lipopolysaccharides are found in what we call gram-negative bacteria, some very specific type of bacteria that are very, very commonly found in our gut. Now, our immune system is hyperactive to these lipopolysaccharides. They're also known as endotoxins. So sometimes as our immune system starts to kill off a bacteria, we know that these bacteria can release endotoxins. Well, lipopolysaccharides don't, aren't given off just when the bacteria starts to die. They're actually found within the bacteria itself, whether it's alive or it's being killed off by our immune system. Now, our immune systems will react very intensely to these lipopolysaccharides. Saccharides. So, when we have lipopolysaccharides in our GI tract, it's actually known to call, cause gut hyperpermeability, or as we like to call it, leaky gut. When we have leaky gut, and if you're interested in finding out what exactly leaky gut is, Dr. Scott has done a fantastic video on it, and we've got great information on leaky gut on our website, iBrainandBody.com. But that's not the point of this video today. What we want to talk about is what lipopolysaccharides will do to our hormones. So LPS, or lipopolysaccharides, in our GI tract can lead to gut hyperpermeability or leaky gut. So, and when we get leaky gut, those lipopolysaccharides can enter our systemic circulation. So now, rather than just being within our gut, we can start to see this travel throughout our entire body. And remember, our immune system is hyperactive to lipopolysaccharides. So we're going to get an inflammatory response throughout the entire body. So as you can see over here, what we get is systemic inflammation. Inflammation from our head to our toes. What that inflammation does is it causes a down regulation of hormone enzyme pathways. It can also promote insulin resistance. This insulin resistance will then promote other hormone shifts. Now that's huge. When we start seeing changes in one hormone such as insulin, it'll start changing other hormones like progesterone, estrogen, and testosterone, and even thyroid hormone. LPS also causes changes in brain function because we're getting inflamed. The, the brain, when it's inflamed, it doesn't work very well. So we get an alteration of what we call the HPA axis or the hypo pituit, hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. So how well the brain communicates with your adrenal glands. So now we're talking about cortisol levels and your energy. So the brain will then, it talks to the adrenal glands for the release of cortisol. Because we're started, because LPS is starting to make alterations in that HPA axis, we get a lot of miscommunication between the brain and the adrenal glands, and we get altered cortisol levels, which can ultimately lead to what we call adrenal fatigue, where we get those symptoms of real low energy all day long. You wake up feeling like you could use another six hours of sleep. About two or three o'clock in the afternoon, you don't even need to, need to look at a clock for what time it is because you know that that's your typical nap time or time to make more coffee. And in the morning you drink coffee not because you, not just out of enjoyment, but because you need it. That is what we typically see with alterations in cortisol levels and what we like to call adrenal fatigue. So LPS in the systemic system will also cause dysregulation of simply the hypothalamic pituitary axis. So the hypothalamic pituitary axis controls our the release and uh, the release and it it, de it determines the levels of your sex hormones. So when we start to see changes here, we get alterations of your estrogen, your testosterone, and your progesterone. So as you can see, lipopolysaccharides found in these bacteria will start to change brain function, which then will lead to changes in your energy and your cortisol levels, your sex hormones, and the hormone enzyme pathways, and it will also start changing your insulin, your ability to handle insulin as well. So how do you know if you have a, a bacteria residing in your gut that has lipopolysaccharides in it? One of the best ways to determine this is through a stool analysis. And that stool analysis is gonna show us what's growing there and what should not be growing there. If you can get a really good stool analysis, it'll actually even tell you how to kill off those, those LPS and what type of things you need in order to support a healthy GI 
GI tract. Because your GI tract, as you can see, will dictate the, it will dictate the health of the rest of your body. Having a healthy GI tract is huge. So what we want to do also, other than just figure out what's growing there and what's not growing there, is just in general make sure we have a healthy GI tract by putting healthy things into our GI tract. What does that mean? It means just like it sounds, make sure that you're eating healthy foods. It can be as simple as that, making sure you have a lot of vegetables, a good source of protein with each and every single one of your meals. Make sure you live as an anti-inflammatory lifestyle as humanly possible. But specific testing, once you get to the point where we're seeing huge changes in all of these areas, that's when it's time to start looking at proper testing and we highly recommend finding a functional medicine practitioner who can guide you through this process. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you found this video enjoyable. If you're looking for more detailed information on things like lipopolysaccharides and what you can do for your GI tract, I highly recommend you check out our other videos that are on Facebook as well as YouTube. And you can check out our blog articles on our website, iBrainAndBody.com. Thank you and have a great day.